All right, everyone. Uh, I know that was a short little break, but uh, welcome back. Um, so again, uh, Jim Way, Executive Director of AES, and we got a special treat for you today. Um, we have with us Mike McVetta, who is the Space Simulation uh, Facility Manager at the NASA Glenn Research Center, um, who's going to guide us through a virtual tour of the center's uh, electric propulsion and power laboratory. So, Mike, welcome, and uh, great to have you here, and take it away. Hi, Jim. Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, you know, we, we really like to show off our electric propulsion and power laboratory, and that uh, is certainly a challenge in these times. All right, excellent. We'll let it rip. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see my screen and my mouse. It's showing uh, up perfect in the webinar, Mike. You're perfect, good. perfect. You'll have to bear with me. Uh, you know, normally we do these tours in person, so uh, this is a little different. Uh, so once again, welcome um, to the Electric Propulsion and Power Laboratory uh, at the NASA Glenn Research Center. A little background on the area. Uh, that I manage. We have roughly 30 different vacuum facilities, uh, ranging from, you know, something that'll fit on your coffee table that's a foot in diameter and a foot long cylinder to uh, VF6 over here that is, you know, 25 feet in diameter and almost 70 feet long. So a, a huge array of different sizes and capabilities uh, at Lewis Field. So, you know, it, Looking here, this is uh, standing in our high bay in, in the electric propulsion power laboratory. Uh, you know, VF6 is over here to your right. Um, right kind of in front of us is vacuum facility 12. It's one of our mid-sized chambers at 10 feet in diameter and 30 feet long. And we'll scroll over here to VF5. This is our most capable electric propulsion test facility. Uh, and we'll get into that uh, as we move inside. So welcome to the inside of VF5. This is uh, very unique. Normally we don't get to take people inside VF5 because uh, it's just not uh, very easy to navigate through. Uh, VF5 is 15 feet in diameter and 60 feet long. So I just spoke about the extreme capabilities of VF5. Uh, the, the big reason for that is it has the most pumping speed of any other chamber. And, and that's very important when you're looking at electric propulsion testing. Uh, you know, the thrusters we test use xenon gas uh, that goes through the thruster. It's ionized inside and then accelerated uh, via an applied electrical field. And that's what provides the thrust. So we have gas being, you know, expelled into the vacuum chamber. So the quicker we can pump it, the more space-like our conditions are. So VF5 can pump 700,000 liters per second of xenon gas. Um, so that's just an incredible uh, amount of pumping speed. So how do we get the vacuum in VF5? Um, we have eight different mechanical pumps um, that take out 99% you know, of the air. And then when we have those last few remaining molecules bouncing around, uh, we have a cryogenic pumping system. So if you look up at the 10 o'clock and two o'clock positions, you can see these louvered um, panels. Those are our cryo pumps. So in operation, they run about negative 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So all those molecules that are you know, randomly bouncing around in here stick to those panels, therefore reducing the pressure. Now, it's, it's very important that we can do that. Xenon gas is very expensive. Uh, it can range between 20 and, I believe, $50 a liter. So a standard tea bottle of xenon can be upwards of $100,000. So because we can capture it, uh, once we finish our test segment, we can actually recover that xenon and recycle it for a few dollars a liter, just a huge savings to our test customers. So you'll also notice in the picture here that we have these tiled panels lining the chamber. Those are graphite. Um, it's 
the consistency of number two pencil lead. That is important because that is what protects our chamber walls. Uh, we actually had a, a different facility than VF5 where these panels were just kind of butted together. Uh, and when we were doing maintenance on that facility and pulled these plates off, it looked like someone had taken a die grinder and just cut a score into the cylinder wall because the high energy ions at, at exceptionally high speed uh, coming out of the thruster actually eroded away the chamber wall. So these panels are here purely for protection. They're, they're a half inch thick uh, graphite. So if we pan around here to the other end of VF5, this is our thrust stand uh, and diagnostics package. So generally the thruster sits uh, right here in the middle. Uh, this arm up top can move in and out and it's on a rotary stage. Uh, and, and I have a really good video when we get over to VF6 of, of how that diagnostic package works. So here is a 200 kilowatt thruster uh, that we tested about a year and a half ago here in VF5. Our typical thruster size is around 12 and a half kilowatts. So this thruster was so large that we had to create a whole new thrust stand and test setup just to test it. Okay, we're going to walk through VF5 and step out the other end of the chamber. So over here nestled in the corner, we have VF13. Uh, this is one of our few facilities that are not um, directly related to electric propulsion testing. Uh, we do a lot of lunar regolith testing. So uh, generally we have a bin of soil and we have drill bits that we test um, at drilling into the soil and recovering uh, different things out of the soil. So as I said, the the soil bin will go right in the middle of this chamber base. There's a XY translation table that will sit on top of that and hold the drill that's being tested. Uh, this white cylinder here is a liquid nitrogen thermal shroud. So that will get stacked onto the chamber. And then we'll pan over here. This is our lid for the facility that goes on top. Now we can do our thermal vacuum testing. So moving around the corner, here is the side of Vacuum Facility 5. Uh, we have several test operator stations here. Uh, and one thing unique we have is right here is a viewport. Uh, we have another one here. Um, we have several cameras in the facilities where we can real time show video a thruster test the thruster testing uh, that's going on inside of the chamber. Okay, so moving back down the hallway and moving over to vacuum facility six. Okay, welcome to the inside of vacuum facility six. You'll notice it, it looks a little different uh, than the inside of VF5. Um, let me pull up a picture here. This is from back in August of 1961 when VF6 was being built. Uh, so both VF5 and VF6 are, they've been around a long time. Both of them were built in the early 60s. Uh, so you can see it's a, a, a steel uh, slash stainless steel construction. Uh, it's, it's actually pretty neat, I think. Uh, both VF5 and VF6 are carbon steel with a stainless steel clad that was explosion welded onto the inside of it. Um, for contamination, it's, it's best to use stainless steel, but for cost savings, uh, you know, they did the cladding. Right. We got a nice little video here. Let's see if I can get it expanded. Okay, so you'll, you'll, you'll notice here uh, VF6 looks a little different than the, the view we just showed. Um, this black wall here is a liquid nitrogen cooled thermal shroud. Uh, so VF6 is uh, uh, unique uh, in its own way. 
from VF5 that it can do the thermal testing of space along with the vacuum. Um, VF6 also uses cryogenic pumping. Uh, they're a, a completely different setup though. You know, we saw the, the really large panels in VF5. Uh, if you look down here, these six boxes on our end bell of the chamber, those are individual cryo pumps. So VF5 had large panels with a, a single system operating the cryo pumping system. These are six individual on the end cap, plus there's six more in the chamber. So because they are smaller, uh, we don't have quite the sporty performance we have of VF5, um, but we can still produce uh, very good vacuum levels and test reasonably sized thrusters in here. So we'll go through here. You know, we talked about VF5 having graphite plate. Uh, VF6 is a little bit different. Um, so I'll stop it right here. We, we, are, we do more long duration testing in VF5. Um, that's why we have the plate. VF6 is more shorter duration. So what you can see here on the walls that looks kind of like a pillow, that is graphite foil that's attached to aluminum sheeting. So it's much thinner. Um, of course, much cheaper, too, to install and use. Uh, so that's a, a big difference between the two facilities. So we'll continue through this. Uh, you can see here's our, our test setup in Tank 6, and I have some good pictures of that um, moving forward. But uh, very similar to Tank 5, that you know where we have our thruster mounted on a thrust stand. Um, there is, you can see the orange here is capped on um, material. That's to help reduce the electrical effects on that thrust stand. So you'll see that quite a bit. Okay, so we'll swing around to our thrust stand setup. Uh, as you can see, it does look quite similar to VF5. Uh, you know, with our thrust stand, in our diagnostics probe arm here that, that moves through the plume of the thruster. And if you look right up here in the corner, we have a camera. Uh, and this is a, a, a fantastic video from that camera uh, showing it. This is our 12 and a half kilowatt uh, thruster in operation as we're taking data with that, that probe arm. You know, we have that camera going here and you get a really, really cool view of the thruster. So there you go. That's, uh, that's the speed the probe arm moves and, and taking data of that thruster plume. Okay, um, behind the thrust stand, you can see we have more of those cryo pumps. Um, four more here, and then there's actually two underneath the thrust stand. Uh, so it's a very nice, um, evenly dispersed uh, pumping system that leaves you with a, a very evenly um, distributed vacuum in the chamber. Okay, so moving back out to the main, um, do we have any questions? that I can answer for you guys. They're still on. Yeah, hey Mike, this is, this is really cool. This is awesome, thanks man. Yeah. Um, so Thank yeah, you. we do have a question. Um, and this is from uh, actually uh, Al Tadros, who's uh, at one of our sponsors, uh, Maxar. Um, GRC has amazing facilities for SEP development. Um, can you describe the limits um, uh, is it 200 kilowatts or, or how GRC might support even higher power NEP type systems? Um, and if they don't exist, are those in the works? Uh, so that, that's a great question. So that 200 kilowatt thruster really taxed vacuum facility five. Um, there's, there's a lot of different uh, variables and it's, it's hard to really pinpoint a max, um, you know, kilowattage per se. Um, so VF5, was, was almost to the point it was too small, uh, that it could not handle the thermal loads of that 200 kilowatt thruster. So running it at a very long duration 
uh, was problematic because we couldn't keep those cryo panels cold. Uh, moving forward, we have almost completed a, a upgrade design for VF6. Uh, you know, we talked VF5 at, you know, 700,000 liters per second pumping speed. Uh, VF6, of course, is, you know, five feet or 10 feet bigger in diameter than, than VF5. So we have, you know, we have more room for that thruster. And this upgrade project we've been working for a few years now is to add similar pumping capability of VF5. Um, you know, as I said, we have the 12 independent cryo pumps, and VF5 has the the one system supporting six cryo panels. Well, the design for VF6 is six cryo panels, just like VF5, with that um, one supporting system. So the the calculations we've done brings the pumping speed of VF6 up to um, just over a million liters per second. So that, of course, is something we'd verify uh, if and when we ever completed that project. Um, but we we are certainly hoping to get uh, the funding to do that because that would uh, really make VF6 a, a phenomenal uh, facility for electric propulsion testing. All right, uh, very cool, Mike. Thanks again. Uh, we do have one more uh, quick question for you. Uh, what sure. kind of instrument or method is used for determining the thrust generated? Um, so we have thrust stands that are actually developed by one of our research engineers in-house. Um, I, I certainly don't know the, the mechanics of it, um, but that's what we use to measure the thrust of the thrusters. And uh, we have them in all different sizes. Um, they're somewhat configurable to a point. Uh, you know, as I said, we when we brought that 200 kilowatt thruster in, uh, it was just simply too massive to put on our standard thrust stand. So uh, we had to create a, a whole new thrust stand just to operate that thruster. Uh, and the same goes for for smaller thrusters. We do uh, quite a bit of you know um, sub kilowatt thruster testing, and that's in much smaller chambers uh, with a much smaller thrust stand. Gotcha. That's excellent. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions. I'm not sure what else we got to cover here, uh, unless you had anything else. Right. Um, yeah, I wish I had some more, more <laughs> pictures on this virtual tour. You know, uh, this was kind of created for you know the general public to kind of see what facilities we have, not necessarily giving virtual tours. So right, um, right. Uh, well, hey, hopefully. Uh, you know, it's been great. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, we, of course, wish we could be there in person. Um, hopefully, 2021, we will be out there in person doing this uh, live and on the scene. Um, you know, this year just obviously didn't allow it for uh, uh, pretty obvious reasons. Uh, right. So, yeah, we're really looking forward to uh, being out there next year. And, hey, we thank you so much for doing this. Um, sure. Uh, we appreciate it.